This looks like manager baguette. Also, this O is too big. Also, also, the Daily Mail. Also, 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 these limey bastards throwing shade at Gertie's toffee apples. They're delicious. You leave her alone. What's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a talking snowman before? This tongue-in-cheek reference to the absurdity we're all about to witness only serves to make me feel like I'm being gaslighted by a snowman. Here's where we grow up. And whose dumb job is it to haul boxes of decorations out to the woods to decorate the trees? Christmas seals. No, I'm pretty sure those are just regular seals who just happen to enjoy celebrating Christmas. And Christmas seals are actually an old-timey envelope sticker used to raise money for charitable organizations. So I'm giving this a sin because I think that cheeky snowman knew that. Who ever heard of a skinny Santa? Eat. Eat! I haven't, but I have heard of diabetes, high cholesterol, and heart disease, so I'm gonna say that Mrs. Claus doesn't quite have her priorities in order. Now don't any of you worry your heads about Santa. Mrs. Claus will have him plenty fattened up by Christmas Eve. I'm pretty sure no child cares about Santa's weight. They care about presents. I mean, now they may care about someone else's body fat percentage, but they didn't before you brought it up, so sit on you. He's got a shiny nose. And while we're pointing out things that aren't normally on reindeer, you have pink eyelids, blushy cheeks, and thick, maybe it's Maybelline eyelashes. But that doesn't seem to be concerning. What is the line for alarming visual abnormalities on a reindeer? Well, we'll simply have to overlook it. We all know this nose will ultimately win him fame and fortune, but considering the way everyone reacts to this deformity and the fact that this is a newborn, overlooking this seems negligent. I mean, at least take him to the doctor for a first opinion. After all, if he's going to be on my team someday, he'd better get to know me. Well, I feel like it's enough to send the writers for not thinking this is a creepy statement. I challenge you for a moment to imagine your child's little league coach showing up to their birth and saying this shit. So the biggest sin here, and for most of the show, to be honest, is bad parenting. I'm sure it'll stop as soon as he grows up, Santa. Well... Let's hope so if he wants to make the sleigh team someday. Santa basically saying, I'd love to promote you on merit, but I only choose the most f***able reindeer. And quite frankly, I can't stand the look of your face. Every year I shine up my jingle bells for eight lucky reindeer. Well, it seems I jumped the shark too soon with regard to the Santa having sex with the reindeer angle. That being said, clean bells is the least he can do. And this Christmas hole wants a medal for it? Most important of all, he taught his son to beware of it. The abominable snow monster of the north. Did he though? Obvious antlers are obvious. You see, all the toys Santa brings are made by these elves. There's another term for free labor like that that surprisingly shares a lot of the same letters as elves. And if you said interns, you're not entirely wrong, but you are illiterate and surprisingly versed in ethical economics. Seems elves have that certain knack for toy making. What knack might that be? This guy's just whacking his wood with his hammer. I don't see a nail, a dowel, or anything. All except for this. This one misfit. We now derail your story about Rudolph to introduce you to a character that no one will remember in 50 years. There's a pile up a mile wide behind you! Pretty sure he actually means a mile long. The only place you can get into a pile up a mile wide is Houston. But more importantly, there is no pile up that anyone can see here. Finish the job or you're fired! Wait, they can get fired? I was positive the elves were being held against their will. But if they can get fired, surely they can quit. I quit. Oh, okay. So there's really nothing stopping Hermie here from setting up the small unlicensed dental practice now instead of at the end of the show. Also, this story is leaning hard on the laughable idea of a white, blonde-haired dentist being persecuted for who he is. All right, son, try it on. I don't wanna. Daddy, I don't like it. You'll like it and wear it. The safe sex PSA I was forced to watch in high school somehow makes its way into the show. And to this day, I'm still scared my parents are going to want to have the talk. Is... is the snowman wearing gloves? To keep his hands warm? Well, let's get this over with. I have to go down and look over the new deer. We all know you don't have to, but you want to. And the one -a, and the two -a, and the three -a. Ho, 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 we are Santa's elves. Elves then proceed to sing in perfect harmony, and this little elf equips back with... That sounded terrible! The tenor section was weak! And it was not. The shenanigans were uncalled for, but the harmony was on point. Also, since singing doesn't seem like a skill required to make toys and Santa is ultimately in charge, it's pretty weird for him of all people to be annoyed with his high school musical masquerading as elf practice. This asshole is standing on his instrument. If you're gonna throw down crunchy grooves, you gotta respect your tools, man. We have dolls that cry, talk, walk, blink, and run a temperature! Up to this point, I thought all the toys were old-timey. You know, made out of wooden sh**. 
this guy just dropped a bunch of info about the tech they're building into these things. And after all that, the show still wants me to believe they can't just attach some fog lights to Santa's sleigh. I think you're cute. Making children think the power of boners has a causal relationship to a reindeer's ability to fly. Donner, you should be ashamed of yourself. Right? How dare you allow your seed to gestate a freak of nature such as this? He had a nice takeoff, too. The breeding process is apparently going so well that this asshole has no use for a flying reindeer. It makes about as much sense as Colonel Phillips having so little use for a super soldier that he sends Captain America off to sell war bonds. It's terrible. It's different from everybody else's. But that's what makes it so grand. Why any doe would consider herself lucky to be with you. <laughs> I'm beginning to think the writers actually wrote this whole screenplay as a metaphor about Rudolph's d No doe of mine is going to be seen with a, a red-nosed reindeer. This feels racist. But I don't know if having a red nose is considered to be a different race among reindeer, so maybe it's old fascist. Who are you? Well, actually, I am a dentist. Rudolph said who, not what, and even then, you aren't your job. Well, I am a pedantic ass, and that is most of my job, so maybe some people are their jobs, but the point is, we just met and I just want your name. No one cares that you work in finance, Brad. Hey, what do you say we both be independent together, huh? Libertarians. This is my land! White people in the 1700s. I don't know much about prospecting, but the fervor with which he's licking that pickaxe leads me to believe this oral fixation has nothing to do with it. With my eyes, I see Sam the Snowman playing a banjo in the scene. But with my ears and my soul, I detect no banjo. Cornelius is using a wiener dog on his sleigh team? Why? How? And why? Mom? Dad? I want to watch a show about Rudolph. Sure, kids. Looks calm enough. Yeah! F him up. Why would Cornelius opt for this really dangerous version of a rescue instead of, no, I don't know, shooting the monster in the knee with his gun? Do it yourself, please, Briggs. Climate change. No, this is man's work. Man, the bigotry is strong with this one. I think if he could just pump the brakes on the sexism for a moment, he'd realize this is not work at all. This is taking responsibility for your child, Donner. I find it very concerning that Cornelius Rudolph and Hermie arrive on an island of misfit toys without any of the dogs, and no one seems to notice. They ate them, didn't they? Oh, I want Jelly. I was under the assumption that manufacturing defects were the thing that made you a misfit toy. This is just a temporary condition. If this water pistol fires off enough shots, the problem will eventually resolve itself. Also, someone else deciding to fill you with jelly is not your fault. Unlike playthings, a living creature cannot hide himself on an island. Um, they aren't trying to hide. They're trying to live here. The Lion King seems to be unaware of the fact that a lot of people just live on islands. That night, he decides to strike out on his own and leave the door wide open. Rudolph is a dear dick to dear dicks because everyone in this room's dick is going to have frostbite when they wake up thanks to him. How does he not know that you can quietly escape by turning the handle first as you gently close the door and then slowly release the handle once the door has completely sealed the threshold? A strange and wonderful thing was happening. Show momentarily makes me believe the strange and wonderful thing was going to involve a deer's hole. This is not how sledding works. <laughs> Ah, Hermie has just removed all of Notorious ASM's teeth without anesthetic. And the show plays this as a cute resolution. He's nothing without his choppers. What in the literal f is going on? Show has already established that he's no longer a threat. But the writers felt now would be a good time for Yukon Coriolanus to attack this defensiveless creature and push them off a f***ing cliff. Bumbles bounce! I don't give a sh if they bounce. I reform this bumble. This claim of reformation when I'm not even convinced the abdominal Mo Rocca was a threat to begin with. He hasn't hurt anyone other than the time he dropped a big rock on Rudolph. But at the time, Rudolph was trying to shove antlers up his chimney. Seems defensible to me. You're gonna disappoint the children. They expect a fat Santa. What is with this tension regarding whether or not Santa is going to be fat on Christmas? I have to say, this is the weirdest will they or won't they cliche I've ever come across. That beautiful, wonderful nose. Appreciating someone only after finding out you can exploit their talents. No, that's my Santa. Oh, thanks, Mama. Weird foreplay aside, this is a terrifyingly absurd amount of weight to gain in one night. At first, I thought this lazy-ass Santa was using umbrella parachutes instead of taking the toys down to the houses himself. But then I realized that this evil f***ing elf was just discarding the misfit toys again, like paratroopers behind enemy lines. The darkness of this show has broken the little child that was living quite comfortably in my psyche. I loved a woman who wasn't clean. Mrs. Santa? No, it was her sister. Okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh, my God! Pull up an ice block and lend an ear.
I look around, I see these young faces, and I think, I mean, I made every wrong choice a middle-aged man can make. I pissed away all my money. I chased off anyone who's ever loved me. And lately, I can't even stand the face I see in a mirror. My name's Clarice. Hi. You use Evian skin cream, and sometimes you wear out lead at home. But not today. August, thick as peanut butter. No, sir, Mr. Peanut Butter. Please, Mr. Peanut Butter was my father's name. Hey, looky up there! It's a bird! It's a plane! Jingle, 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 you will hear my sleigh bells ring. I am old Kris Kringle, I'm the king of jingling. First of his name, king of the anvils and the first men, and lord of the seven kingdoms. Hey, are you awake? Yeah. I just want you to know I hate you, and so does my dad. Well, that's fine, because guess what? I hate you too, and this house sucks ass. Ready, Rudolph? The partridge is in the pear tree. We are Gopher Launch. Vehicle? Dash away. Engines? Dash, dash away. away. Partridge? Dash away. Dash away all. Oh.